over the years, I have done dozens of experiments with liquid nitrogen. Experiments, demonstrations, and projects. And if you've seen any of those, then you've probably seen me use a container that looks very much like this. Today, we're gonna take a look inside this container and find out what does it take to keep liquid nitrogen cold. Now, a little bit about liquid nitrogen. It's nitrogen, the same chemical element that makes up almost 80% of the air that we breathe. It's just been cooled down so much that at this atmospheric pressure, it's a liquid. It's clear like water. It has no flavor. It has no smell. It's just a clear liquid, except it's really, really cold. Water at atmospheric pressure boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. Nitrogen boils at negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 196 degrees Celsius. Pretty much everything we ever interact with is a lot warmer than that, which means that almost everything that liquid nitrogen touches makes it boil. That's what it's doing in this container right now. That's why it's bubbling. It's actually boiling off the same way water in a hot pot would do. In addition to experiments and demonstrations with it, I also actually use it in knife making. It helps cool down metal super cold, which helps with some crystal metal formation. That is why I sort of always have liquid nitrogen around. I do a lot of experiments with it, and people always ask, why do you have it? For experiments and for knife making. People also ask very often, where do I get liquid nitrogen? The liquid itself, the liquid nitrogen you can buy at welding supply stores. So anywhere that sells welding gas has a good chance of selling liquid nitrogen as well. Being so cold, people often ask, is liquid nitrogen dangerous? And the answer is yes, it can be very dangerous. It's not, however, as dangerous as it's sometimes portrayed. I just put on this glove. This is specifically for cold stuff. It's a cryogenic glove, but that's not as much for the liquid nitrogen itself as it is for handling the containers that the nitrogen is in. Because nitrogen boils so quickly and easily, if it hits your skin, it just starts boiling. And through something called the Leyden frost effect, creates a vapor barrier between the liquid and your skin itself. It feels cold for just a couple seconds like that. It doesn't really hurt me. Another popular demonstration involving liquid nitrogen is eating food that has been super cooled by the liquid. I've just got some cereal that I'm pouring into this bowl. All of the air inside that cereal is going to get extremely cold. When I eat it, that cold air is going to cool down the moisture inside my mouth, creating a lot of vapor. It looks like I've got just smoke coming out of my mouth. It's very important to make sure you don't actually eat any of the liquid nitrogen. If you swallow it, it could cause freezing burn to your throat or stomach, and expanding your stomach, it could cause a lot of damage that way. But it's a pretty cool party trick. Now, talking about cool containers, check this out. There is regular water in this bottle, but when I drink it, it comes out flavored. Mm. That's because Circle, the sponsor for today's video, has designed this really cool water bottle that lets you just fill up a bottle with normal water and then add flavor while controlling how much there is. One of Circle's main goals is to help people drink more water. Water is good for us. And if you want it flavored, this is a great way to do it because you can just add regular water into the bottle and then add as much flavor as you want. One of these flavor packs on a medium setting will get you six 20 ounce bottles of water worth of liquid. That's a good amount of hydration for a day. And with over a hundred flavors, they've got fruity stuff, they've got coffees and teas, you're sure to find something that you like a lot. You want plain water with no flavoring? Turn the dial one way. You want a lot of flavor in your water? Just twist it the other direction and that's what you're gonna get. Now, because you're using the same bottle over and over, you're saving 84% plastic versus if you went and got a new bottle of flavored water over and over. And of course, all of their flavors have no sugar. Always a bonus. I have been enjoying this mixed berry flavor and once I get through like six more bottles of water and move on to the next one, I'm excited to see what other flavors I like. Using the link in the description or the QR code on the screen, you can get a free white stainless steel bottle and flavor cartridge with your first order of $35 or more. One of my favorite demonstrations to show the chilling power of liquid nitrogen is to show how much it reduces the volume in air just by cooling it. You can't see that happening with the normal air, but if you trap that air inside of a balloon, you can. Balloon is getting too cold to touch. Well, that's a smaller balloon. <laughs> and back to normal. 
So what is going on inside the liquid nitrogen doer to make sure that it stays cold? This whole container actually only holds 10 liters of liquid nitrogen, and this is way bigger than a 10 liter container. So I wanna see what's really happening inside here. Is it something like styrofoam walls, like a cooler? Is it something more like the vacuum walls of this glass, or maybe some combination of the two? The only way to really know is to open it up. And I don't mean taking off the lid. To start, I'm just going to try and drill a hole into the side of this container. I believe this has a vacuum in it. Just get a little divot. All right. Oh, look at that. It's a vacuum. I couldn't see the smoke, but I heard a hissing noise. And when I put my finger over it, sucked right down to it. OK, we got a small hole. It's still sucking air in. You can kind of hear it going. And uh, I can stop that. Once it is completely depressurized, I'm actually going to use this step drill bit and drill a slightly larger hole, probably about as big as this gets, because I want to see if anything will pour out. My plan for cutting it the rest of the way in half to really see what's going on is a bit more destructive. Ooh, there is something. I see a little coil of wire. Can't really make out much more. I'm gonna see if I can film down in there at all. All right, that phone camera shot is getting about as good of footage as I can see with my actual eyes. So other than that, we are still in the dark, which means we need to really open it up. Need to cut something tricky in half? Ask Daniel at the Water Jet channel. This giant machine behind us can cut through what? Everything, pretty, pretty much. much. So we've got the doer set up on the machine and we're just gonna slice it in half and see what's inside. All right, this is almost entirely cut through. There's a couple of spots, really weird thick areas that it didn't want to go all the way through, but that's okay because that lets us sort of take it back to the workshop in mostly one piece. It is of course full of a lot of water. That's just gonna pour out there. There's also these little bits of like charcoal coming out. So I think that we're gonna find some other stuff in there as well. Can see through it. Yeah, there's things happening in there. Now the water jet got this almost all the way cut through. On this side, it looks great. It is very big and we're going through unknown stuff in the middle. So I'm now going to start using an angle grinder to get through the edges and I'm probably gonna be peeling this apart in layers. Also got part of the lid that didn't get cut all the way through. Uh, that's just plastic. I can see at the angle, like there's almost, almost nothing left holding it together. my half a handle here and can I, ooh, can I even lift it? Is it still attached by something? <laughs> oh boy. So we can see a few things here. We've got plasticky looking beads, which were apparently around. We've definitely got layers of insulation and interesting plastic channel. I wouldn't have thought there would be much plastic in this because most plastics get so brittle when they get this cold that they could just fall apart. And of course we have the inner tank. This is what's actually the volume. This is where the liquid nitrogen is actually held when you're filling up this container. So you've got a lot of space around it, which as we tested was at least low pressure, possibly almost a full vacuum. So now I have to get into this tank too. Oh, there we go. So this right here, this is not always in here. This is the wet garnet powder that's added to the water jet to make sure it can actually cut through anything harder than, you know, mild plastic. So what does it take to keep liquid nitrogen from just boiling away? Well, we've got vacuum in the walls. We have an inner chamber where the liquid nitrogen actually sits and we've got a lot of insulation around it. Now, I don't know exactly what this insulation is. It seems to be a metallic foil with layers of just like fibrous material. To me, it looks really similar to other types of insulation like you'd see wrapped around pipes or something like that. So I don't think this is any space age, that fancy stuff. There's just a lot of layers of it and it does go all the way around like every part of the inner container. So after cutting this portion in half, we can see the valve, which is how they pull the air out in the first place, pull a vacuum, and then this whole thing, I think, is a plug that fits right in there and 
just stays nice and sealed up. Holds all that lack of air inside. As always, a huge thank you shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. We could not do these videos without you. If you're interested in joining the Patreon supporters, the link for that is in the description.